Greetings, motherfuckers. My name is Sam, and today I'm totally stoked to tell you all about the great state of California, a fascinating land of sun, sea, and several fascinating trees. We'll get to that later. Radical. But what is interesting about California's entire coastline? Why should you think twice before throwing a frisbee on a beach in Los Angeles County? And exactly how many times was California misspelt while researching and writing this video? Ha, <laughs> you'll, you'll never know, but it was a lot. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so pour yourself some Californian Chardonnay, bleach your hair blonde, and prepare to learn something in a radical video all about California IA in 101 Facts About California. Bodacious. Number one. California is a state, one of those in the much talked about United States in fact, located in the Pacific region of the United States of America. It's one of the most widely known US states, famous for its glorious weather, the US film industry, and hilarious surfer dude accents. <laughs> Pretty much sums it up, right? Number 2. Geographically, California is bordered by Oregon to the north, as well as Nevada and Arizona to the east, all of which are also America. However, to the south, California is bordered by more California, specifically Baja California, a state in the country of Mexico, which is technically not America. To the west, California is bordered by Poseidon's Back Garden, also known as Pacific Ocean. Number 3. What is now California was first settled by various indigenous tribes somewhere between 15,000 and 12,000 years ago. It's believed that by the 1400s, as many as 300,000 Native American people were living within the present day boundaries of California. Number 4. However, that all changed in the early 15th century, when the area was happened upon by everyone's favourite colonists, the Europeans. Spurred by the possibility of a sea route between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans and fanciful notions of an island of gold, the Spanish began to explore northwards up the Pacific coast, irrevocably changing the entire region forevermore. Number 5. This seems like a good a time as any to talk about where the word California comes from. The whole Golden Island thing comes from La Sagas de Splendian, a popular adventure book of the time written by Garcia Ordonez de Montalvo. The book describes a mythical island called California, inhabited solely by a race of beautiful warrior women who made everything from gold, which was abundant on the island. When the Spanish first sighted Baja California, they believed it to be an island separated from the rest of the continent, and named it after the fictional women-only island they read about in bed when they thought everyone else was asleep. Number 6. At least that's what many experts believe is the most likely origin of the word California. It's not the only theory though. Some have suggested that California could come from the old Spanish California, an alteration of the Latin Calida Fornax, meaning hot furnace. Which, to be fair, sort of makes sense. Number 7. Regardless, what is now California was first sighted by non-native eyes in 1542, by an explorer named Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo, who we think was Spanish but may have been Portuguese. Either way, he apparently got caught up in some pretty nasty oppressed the natives business prior to his trip to California, so don't feel too bad about fact date. Number 8. Cabrillo's expedition wasn't exactly a success, owing in part due to the fact that in 1543, fairly soon after becoming the first European to sight California, he smashed his leg open on a rock during a scuffle with some warriors from a native Tongva tribe, after which he quickly developed gangrene and died. What a shame. Number 9. Anyway, his men buried him somewhere in the Channel Islands, different Channel Islands by the way, then continued sailing north, getting as far as what we now know as the US state of Oregon. However, despite rumours of a sea route to the Atlantic and vast riches found in cities of gold, the explorers essentially found nothing for the Spanish to exploit, and as a result the region remained largely unsettled and unexplored by the Europeans for well over 200 years, save for the odd excursion by explorers like Sir Francis Drake and Sebastian Vizcano. Number 10. By the 1760s, however, Spain began to feel increasing pressure to actually take control of the region. Russia and Britain were pushing ever closer to the region from their respective territories in Alaska and Canada, and missionaries were eager to convert the natives to Christianity, which was the fashion at the time. As such, Spain felt it necessary to establish settlements in what's now California in order to secure their claim to the area as part of Spain's vast American territory of New Spain. Number 11. And so, in 1769, the Spanish embarked on the sacred expedition dispatching land and sea forces northwards from Baja California. Several weeks later, the Presidio of San Diego was established, making it the first permanent European settlement on the Pacific coast. Mazel tov, or, or not, colonialism, still bad. Number 12. Not long after, Spanish military forces built numerous forts and several small towns, while Spanish missionaries established the first of what would later number no less than 21 missions on or near the coast of what's now California. The San Francisco Mission later became the city of San Francisco, and these two small villages ultimately grew into the cities of Los Angeles and San Jose. Number 13. 
However, by the early 19th century, many of Spain's American colonies were starting to get sick of just being colonies, and felt that they were old enough to be countries of their own. And so, in 1810, the people of Mexico rose up against their Spanish rulers and began the Mexican War of Independence, which concluded in 1821. As you can probably guess from the name, Mexico managed to secure its independence, making California a district of Mexico. Number 14. After 1821, the Mexican government began the process of secularizing and taking control of the numerous missions in California. Large areas of land were given to prominent and politically influential Mexicans who prospered by raising livestock, giving birth to the much mythologized ranchero culture. Number 15. It's worth noting that by this time, the region's Native American population had been devastated as a result of their contact with colonists. While native deaths from outright warfare and violent conflicts were rare, the Europeans brought with them a host of foreign diseases against which the indigenous Californians had no natural immunity. Where'd it go, gang? Number 16. Some estimates suggest that by the mid-1830s, disease had reduced the region's native population to only 150,000 people, constituting a loss of around half of all indigenous people in California in the six decades since the first contact with Europeans. That... That's very bad. That's very bad indeed. Number 17. Around this time, it was becoming clear that the United States really wanted California just for themselves. The Americans justified the voracious land lust with the contested but popular notion of manifest destiny, which asserted that the United States had the God-given right to expand and settle across the continent of North America. This view was shared by United States President James K. Polk, gosh, what a surprise, who actually offered to buy large areas of land from Mexico. These proposals were refused by the Mexican government, inflaming tensions between the two countries. Number 18. By this point, large numbers of American immigrants had moved to California, and often found themselves at odds with the newly formed and unstable notion of Mexico. As a result, many of the people living in what's now California came to resent Mexican rule, and the tensions grew ever more tense as the tense years went by. So tense. Well, the tension starts coming and it doesn't stop coming and it doesn't stop coming and it doesn't stop coming. Number 19. Texas declared independence from Mexico in 1836, after which it was annexed by the United States in 1845, leaving the Mexicans pretty darn miffed. This served as the final trigger for the outbreak of the Mexican-American War in 1846, at which point Mexico broke off diplomatic relations and ordered all foreigners without proper papers to be deported from California. Ugh, bad move, Mexico. Though the irony is not lost. Number 20. Outraged American settlers responded by defying Mexican rule altogether, and in June of 1846 staged the Bear Flag Revolt in Sonoma in Northern California. Americans in the Mexican territory of Alta California declared independence from Mexico and established a short-lived breakaway state known as the California Republic, which lasted only 25 days before it too was annexed by the United States. Number 21. After the Mexican-American War ended in 1848, Mexico was forced to cede the majority of the former Mexican territory of Alta California to the US, most of which then formed the US states of Nevada and Utah and parts of Arizona, Colorado, and Wyoming. The western portion of Alta California then simply became California, and on the 9th of September 1850, was officially admitted into the Union as the 31st state of the United States. California was officially American, baby. Number 22, ooh, ooh, uh, yeah. So, that's that. To be honest, there wasn't really much going on after California got accepted to the old America Club. Bit boring, really. Psych! On the 24th of January, 1848, literally just days before the end of the Mexican-American War, a carpenter from New Jersey named James W. Marshall found several small nuggets of gold in the American River at the site of a sawmill that he was building near Coloma in Northern California. But seriously, that's it. That's the only interesting thing that happened in California at that time. Number 23. Psych again! Gosh darn, you've got to stop falling for that. Marshall's discovery sparked the California Gold Rush, which led to dramatic social and demographic changes in the form of large-scale immigration to California from the east of America and around the world, accompanied by the type of major economic boom you'd expect to occur when someone discovers gold in a river in the middle of the 19th century. It was all kicking off, basically. Number 24. Yeah. In the weeks and months that followed Marshall's discovery, thousands of eager prospectors flooded to California hoping to strike it rich changing the future of the state forever. By August of 1848, the hillsides above the American River were littered with the tents and wood huts of roughly 4,000 gold miners. In the subsequent four years after Marshall's discovery, California's population leapt from 14,000 to 250,000, and between 1847 and 1870, the population of San Francisco increased from just 500 to 150,000. Number 25. 
The California Gold Rush ultimately constitutes the single largest mass migration in American history, bringing a total of about 300,000 people to California, almost all of whom were young men. These gold seekers were known variously as Argonauts and 49ers, the year 1849 being the peak year for immigration to California. Number 26. Though estimates vary, it's believed that in the 1850s, miners extracted almost 800 metric tons of gold from the California countryside, equivalent to tens of billions of dollars today. Number 27. Somewhat ironically though, only a small number of early arrivals to the gold rush became wealthy as a result, while most of the people who moved to California in search of the gold made only modest profits or very little at all. <laughs> Gutted. Number 28. In fact, modern research has since confirmed that merchants made far more money than miners during the gold rush, simply by selling overpriced food, goods, and supplies to prospectors. <laughs> Double gutted. Number 29. Like, seriously, to say that such merchants exploited the demand for their services is putting it very lightly. During the gold rush, having one's clothes laundered professionally was so expensive, it was actually cheaper for miners to ship their dirty garments to Honolulu in Hawaii, almost 4,000 kilometers away, where they would be cleaned and sent back to California. Number 30. It's worth pointing out that while the gold rush resulted in an economic boom, hastened California's ascension to statehood, and in many ways made the state what it is today, it constituted yet another disastrous period for the region's indigenous population. Native Americans in the area were forced out of their traditional hunting, fishing, and food gathering grounds, creating conflict with the miners, which culminated in literally hundreds of massacres against the outgunned natives, collectively known today as the California Genocide. Number 31. And so, as a direct result of violence, disease, enslavement, legal discrimination, and social disruption, the native population of California ultimately fell to only around 30,000 by the year 1870, constituting a loss of roughly 120,000 native lives over the course of a little over two decades. Number 32. While California sided with the North at the onset of the American Civil War in 1861, strong pro-secessionist sympathies in Southern California, and the sheer physical distance between the West Coast and the vast majority of the battles in the East of the country, meant that the new states played a reduced role in the event of the war. However, California did make significant contributions to the success of the Union by sending limited numbers of combat forces, providing gold, building forts along frontier trials, and suppressing Confederate activity. Number 33. Up until the late 1860s, the trip to and from California from the East Coast was a long and dangerous undertaking. In 1869, however, the first transcontinental railway was completed, linking California to the rest of the continental United States with an easy and direct route for the very first time. The completion of this route, or route, made the journey to and from California far faster, safer, and cheaper, and was widely considered to be one of the greatest American technological feats of the 19th century. Number 34. The western portion of railway between Sacramento and northern Utah was built mostly by thousands of Chinese laborers, who were hired after a job ad elicited only a few hundred responses from white laborers. After the railway was completed in 1869, these workers flooded the labor market, creating tension that eventually culminated in a series of anti-Chinese immigration laws. Number 85. After the frenzy surrounding the gold rush died out, California increasingly became a highly productive agricultural region, and continued to grow both in population and importance as the dawn of the 20th century came and went. The region saw significant immigration from south of the border owing to the disruption caused by the Mexican Revolution, further establishing California's Latino heritage. Number 36. Around this time, California emerged as the home of the US film industry, serving as the filming location of many of the earliest American films. Southern California's consistently pleasant weather, diverse scenery, and cheap land and labor, as well as its distance away from Thomas Edison's notorious authoritarian motion picture patents company, made it the perfect place for the film industry to materialize, and materialize it did, baby. So it appears I have Thomas Edison's unethical business practices to thank for introducing me to my darling light and elegance, Queen Jennifer Lawrence. Thanks for being a knob, Edison. Number 37. While much of the United States and many nations around the world were scarred by the effects of the Great Depression in the early 1930s, California suffered far less. Migrant workers from the impoverished prairie state of the Dust Bowl traveled to California in search for work, causing significant social unrest in the region. Number 38, yeah. As with many places around the world, the Second World War had a significant impact on California. Many of the military ships used by the US were manufactured in California, while women were recruited into the workforce, proving themselves to be perfectly capable in a range of traditionally male jobs. Shocking, I know. Do try to hold your outraged gasps until the end of the video, though. Number 39. Sadly, though, the Second World War brought with it a resurgence in anti-Asian sentiment that culminated with the mass incarceration of up to 120,000 Japanese Americans in internment camps. 
People of Japanese ancestry were excluded from living anywhere throughout the West Coast, including the entirety of the state of California, except for in designated camps. The largest and most controversial of which was Tule Lake in Northern California, which held almost 30,000 people throughout the four years it was in operation. Number 40. On the 14th of October 1947, California became the location of history's very first supersonic flight. The feat was achieved over the Mojave Desert in Southern California in a Bell XS-1 rocket aircraft, which the pilot Chuck Yeager had nicknamed Glamorous Glennis after his wife. Yep, that's right. The first plane to break the sound barrier was called Glamorous Glennis. Well, looks like I found my drag name. Number 41. The latter half of the 20th century in California was characterized by the explosive growth of the high technology sector that emerged in the Santa Clara Valley region of the San Francisco Bay Area, now known as Silicon Valley. With all these developments, California is now widely known as a world center of the entertainment and music technology engineering and aerospace industries, as well as the center of agricultural production of the United States. It's a pretty big deal, basically. The Meaning of Life Oh, and bodybuilding movie superstar Arnold Schwarzenegger served as the governor of California between 2003 and 2011. That about wraps it up for Californian history. Right, moving on to geography. Number 43. Today, California covers an area of roughly 423,970 square kilometers, making it the third largest US state by area, after everything's bigger in Texas, Texas, and Alaska, which is, ironically, bigger than Texas. Number 44. California is often geographically bisected into two distinct regions, Southern and Northern California. Though opinions differ on where exactly the dividing line lies, generally speaking, Southern California comprises the 10 southernmost counties, and Northern California comprises the remaining 48 northernmost counties. Small disclaimer here, I included this fact mostly to use the word bisected in a sentence. Stop, it gives you all your daily nutrients. Number 45. At a certain point on Highway 99 of the San Joaquin Valley of California, near the central Californian city of Madeira, there is a palm tree and pine tree conspicuously planted next to each other in a Median strip of the road. The palm tree signifies Southern California, while the pine tree signifies Northern California. But which is better, no cal or SoCal? Let us know in our totally tubular YouTube poll. Number 46. As previously mentioned, California is highly geographically diverse, ranging from the beaches of the Pacific Coast in the west to the Sierra Nevada mountain range in the east, and from the Redwood and Douglas fir forest in the northwest to the arid Mojave Desert in the southeast. Number 47. Streaking dramatically down the center of the state of California's flat central valley, a major agricultural area that contains around 11% of California's total land area, roughly equivalent in size to Denmark. Number 48. With 39.6 million residents, California is by far the most populated state in the US. Something about the perfect weather, beaches, economic prosperity, and celebrities just seems to attract people. Number 49. California is a multicultural state where people from a diverse range of ethnicities and cultures reside, evidenced by the fact that roughly a quarter of the people living in California were born outside of the US. Now, if you're the kind of kook that would some reason have a problem with that, I suggest you go back and rewatch the early parts of this video in which I mentioned the fact that the native population of California was almost completely wiped out because European settlers loved gold too much. Number 50. California is also known for its distinctive state flag, known as the bear flag. For, uh, for obvious reasons, really. As the more attentive among you may have realized, the bear flag is based on the flag used by the plucky so-and-sos who staged the 1846 bear flag revolt we talked about earlier. See? I told you guys, flag history's fun. Number 51. Sadly, this specific variety of bear featured on the flag, known as the California grizzly bear, is now very much extinct. The last possible sighting of a California grizzly bear occurred in 1924, and grizzlies have not been seen in the state since. God, humans suck. I mean, a lot of animals suck too, but humans are the worst. Number 52. California's state capital is the city of Sacramento, a status it gained after the state capital was moved from the small northern California city of Benicia in 1854. Sacramento is the Spanish word for sacrament, and as you will see for the rest of the video, it's typical of California's abundant Spanish language Catholic place names. Number 53. The most populated city in California is Los Angeles, which is Spanish for the Angels. See? Super Catholic. Home to over 3.9 million people, Los Angeles is also the second most populated in the entirety of the United States, having been beaten to the top by the show-offs in New York City. Number 54. California is also home to the San Bernardino County, which covers an area of 52,070 square kilometers, making it the largest county in the US by area, roughly equivalent in size to Costa Rica. I mean, some of Alaska's boroughs and centers area are larger, but they're technically not counties. And also it's Alaska, who cares? Number 55. 
Because of its deliciously productive tech, agriculture, tourism, and entertainment industries, California's economy is worth roughly $3 trillion, making it the largest in the United States by far and the largest subnational economy in the world. Number 56. In fact, if California were a country, it would be the fifth largest economy in the world, larger than the UK, France, or India, a country with 1.3 billion people in it. Number 57. Of course, with all that it has to offer, California is one of the world's most popular tourist destinations, hosting a grand total of 268 million tourists in 2016, though the vast majority of those were Californians themselves. Only 7% of tourists to California come from outside the US, though that works out at a not-so-shabby figure of 18.7 million people. Number 58. Like most US states, California has a variety of nicknames, the most well-known of which is its official nickname, the Golden State. Alternative state sobriquets include the El Dorado State, the Grape State, and somewhat bizarrely, the Land of Milk and Honey. Number 59. California's state motto is actually a single word, and that word is Eureka, a Greek word meaning I have found it. Famously bellowed through the streets of ancient Syracuse by wet and naked Archimedes after a particularly mentally stimulating bath, as the motto of California, the word Eureka refers to the famous discovery of gold that we talked about earlier. Number 60. In 1972, a politician serving in the California State Assembly named W. Craig Biddle nominated the humble trilobites to be California's state fossil. But despite the backing of several academic institutions, geological groups, and almost 2,000 museum creators and fossil experts, Biddle's bill never even made it to the Assembly 4 to be voted upon. The very next year, though, another bill was proposed to make the saber-toothed cat California's state fossil and was passed by 27 votes to 1. The sole no vote was cast by none other than trilobite lover W. Craig Biddle. Orc Wood. Number 61. California is located on the San Andreas Fault, a continental transform vault that extends roughly 1,300 kilometers down the length of the state. The fault forms a tectonic boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate, and its motion is the right lateral strike slip, which is a fancy science guy term for horizontal. Number 62. As a result, Southern California experiences about 10,000 earthquakes each year, although only around 15 of them have a magnitude greater than 4. Number 63. California also contains a large portion of the Mojave Desert, the driest desert in North America. Named after the native Mojave people, the majority of the Mojave Desert covers an area of roughly 65,000 square kilometers in California and Nevada, though small areas extend to Utah and Arizona. Nintendo 64 In the northern region of the Mojave Desert is Death Valley, where temperatures often approach 50 degrees Celsius, or if you're America and nowhere else in the world, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. That's only during the summer, though, and it has an average of only 5 centimeters of rainfall every year. Number 65. In fact, on the 10th of July 1913, the temperature of Furnace Creek in Death Valley rose to a frankly satanic 56.7 degrees Celsius, or again for you Americans, 134 degrees Fahrenheit, the highest reliably recorded air temperature on Earth ever recorded. Just reading that has made me sweat. Number 66. Uh, Sometimes you just feel like you're at your lowest point. Sometimes, though, that's because you're in Death Valley's Badwater Basin, which at 282 feet below sea level is the lowest point in the entire of North America. Come on, man, that's low. Number 67. California is also home to Mount Whitney. And I, I, which at 4,421 meters tall is the tallest mountain in the continental United States. Located on the border between California's Inyo and Tulare counties, Mount Whitney is the most prominent peak in California's dramatic Sierra Nevada mountain range which stretches for 640 kilometers on the east side of the Central Valley. Number 68. And get this, Mount Whitney is located only 136 kilometers away from Badwater Basin, the aforementioned lowest point in the United States, constituting an elevation change of over 4,500 meters, less than three hours drive apart. Number 69. Bad Water Basin. The largest lake in California AA is the Salton Sea, which Wikipedia informs me is a shallow saline and Derek Rift Lake. I mean, yeah, sure, sounds fun. Located in southeastern California, Salton Sea has a surface area of 889 square kilometers, which is about two and a half times as big as the Isle of Wight. For you Brits out there, it's a, it's a big ass lake. Not ass lake. I don't even know what an ass lake is. Anyway, number 70. As it happens, the entire coastline of California is a national monument, owing to the fact that it's, and I'm quoting here, super pretty. Officially titled the California Coastal National Monument upon its creation by former President Clinton in January 2000, the designation guarantees its permanent conservation and ensures California's national coastal beauty will remain for years to come. Number 71. 
Cali can also brag about being the most biologically diverse state in the US too, as it's home to more than 40,000 plant and animal species. Number 72. Likely as a result of its aforementioned plentiful biodiversity, the state of California is home to not one, not two, but nine national parks. The most out of any states in the entire United States, so ha, <laughs> suck it, Maine. Number 73. California's verdant forests are home to the largest trees in the world. One such species is the giant sequoia, which grows naturally only in groves on the western slopes of the Sierra Nevada mountains. In the giant forest of Sequoia National Park in California's Tulare County is one particular tree known as General Sherman, which doesn't have any military credentials, thank God, but is named after the Union Army General William Tecumseh Sherman. With a ground circumference of 31.1 meters, a base diameter of 11.1 meters, and an estimated volume of 1,487 cubic meters, the General Sherman is the largest known living single stem tree on on Earth. He's a big boy. Number 74. But California isn't satisfied to only have the largest trees in the world, as it's also the home of the related coastal redwood, which grow in a relatively narrow strip down much of California's Pacific coast. Coastal redwoods regularly grow up to 90 meters in height, although some are even taller than that. In August of 2006, one specimen dubbed Hyperion sorry, I couldn't not say it like that, was found in a remote area of Redwood National and State Parks in Northern California, which measures an incredible 115.85 meters, making it the tallest known living tree. Number 75. Interestingly, the exact location of Hyperion is a closely guarded secret to protect it from being damaged by overcurious tree tourists. You'd think that the world's tallest tree would be fairly easy to find, but hey, I haven't been a globe-trotting tree enthusiast for many years now. Number 76. California so loves its big trees that both the giant sequoia and the coastal redwood serve as California's official state tree, which I didn't realize were things, but there we are. Meanwhile, New York, Vermont, West Virginia, and Wisconsin all share the lowly sugar maple as their state tree. All that useless shrub does is produce delicious maple syrup. How <laughs> embarrassing. Number 77. But we're not done. California not only has the largest and tallest trees, but another interesting tree known as Methuselah. Located in the Inyo National Forest, Methuselah is the Great Basin Bristlecone Pine that's estimated to have been seeded in 2832 BCE, making it, at the time of this video, around 4,851 years old. As such, Methuselah is the oldest known living non-clonal tree in existence. Number 78. California is also known for Yosemite Falls, a huge waterfall that drops water a total distance of 739 meters. Located in Yosemite National Park, the waterfall actually consists of three separate falls, the Upper Yosemite Fall, the Middle Cascades, and the Lower Yosemite Fall, of which the initial Upper Yosemite Fall boasts the largest single drop of 440 meters. Don't go chasing Yosemite Falls, cause it sounds pretty dangerous. Number 79. California's agriculture industry has the highest output of any US state, producing $47 billion in revenue every year. California produces more than half of America's fresh fruit and is the leading producer of fresh vegetables. All thanks to Michelle Obama telling people to eat healthy in 2010. Thanks, Obama. No, actually, thanks. Number 80. California also produces a whopping 80% of the almonds in the entire world. That's a lot of almonds. Number 81. As if that A-grade almond fact wasn't impressive enough, California also grows roughly 4 million tons of wine grapes every year and produces roughly 90% of all US wine. It's like the France of the US. Number 82. Considering the fact that the largest city in California is frequently abbreviated to simply LA, you might be amused to learn that the original name of the settlement that later grew to Los Angeles was... Oh, El Pueblo de Nuestra Señora El Reina de Los Angeles del Rio de Portalancula which translates to the town of Our Lady Queen of the Angels of the Porthian Kula River. Number 83. One of California's most iconic landmarks is the Hollywood sign of Los Angeles. Located on the southern slope of Mount Lee in the Santa Monica Mountains, first erected in 1923, don't laugh, come on. The sign originally read Hollywood Land and was built to advertise an upscale housing development. Unfortunately, the upscale housing development in question was in fact a segregated white-only housing development. Though in fairness, virtually all of Los Angeles was segregated in the 1920s because racism. Number 84. Located right in the middle of downtown Los Angeles are the Larbury Pits, a group of naturally occurring pits from which liquid asphalt has bubbled from the surface for tens of thousands of years. Over the millennia, numerous individuals from hundreds of different animal species have been trapped in the pits, which preserve their remains extremely well. A whopping 3.5 million fossils have been excavated from the pits, including Ice Age creatures like mammoths and saber-toothed cats. No sign of that little squirrel thing, but it's not, though. Number 85. 
funnily enough, the Labrie is part of the site's name in Spanish for the tar, meaning that the name of one of LA's most iconic natural landmarks essentially means the the tar tar pits. Number 86. In fact, the tar pits aren't the only geographical features in the great state of California with tautologous names. The name of Lake Tahoe, the deep lake that sits on the state line between California and Nevada, consists of the English word lake and the native Washo word Tahoe, which means lake. So it's Lake Lake. Number 87. Lake 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 Lake. Apparently, you may only throw frisbees on the beach in Los Angeles County with the express permission of the attendant lifeguard. I previously assumed that the job of a lifeguard was to guard life, not fun. Number 88. The city of San Francisco holds some of California's most beloved and well-known landmarks. Top of the list is the Golden Gate Bridge, which is curiously neither gold or a gate, but it is a bridge. The big red suspension bridge is so named because it spans the Golden Gate, a 1.6 km wide strait connecting the San Francisco Bay and the Pacific Ocean. At the time of its opening in 1937, it was both the longest and tallest suspension bridge in the world, with a total length of 2.7 km and a total height of 227 meters. Number 89. Another treasured San Francisco favorite is Lombard Street, located in the city's Russian Hill District. More precisely, I'm talking about a steep single block section of Lombard Street that is world famous for its curvy zigzag shape, made up of a total of eight hairpin turns. As such, Lombard Street is often referred to as the most crooked street in the world. I mean, really, who, who let that happen? Number 90. The city of San Francisco is home to a football team known as the San Francisco 49ers, which is a reference to the previously mentioned gold rush in which 1849 was the year of peak immigration to the state of California. You know what? You've probably got the reference. Let's move on. Number 91. In the Californian city of Livermore, situated just outside the San Francisco Bay area, there is a fire station that maintains a light bulb called the Centennial Light. This rather grandiose title has been bestowed upon this humble little light bulb due to the fact that it's been on and emitting light almost constantly since 1906, constituting a lifespan of over 113 years at the time of making the video. The bulb even has its own dedicated webcam, which keeps a watchful eye on the world's longest lasting light bulb. In all honesty, guys, it's facts like that that get me up in the morning. Out of bed, I mean, not. Let's move on. Number 92. In 1981, a dog called Bosco ran for mayor in the small Californian town of Sunol and won. I mean, technically it was an honorary position, but the Black Labrador Retriever and Rottweiler mix beat two humans in the election because humans love dogs more than we love ourselves. Though Bosco's achievement was more of an adorable publicity stunt than anything else, in 1990, the Chinese newspaper The People's Daily rather disingenuously reported on his tenure as an example of the failings of the American electoral process. <laughs> sure, Jan. Number 93. California has produced a wide variety of popular and successful inventions, including, but not limited to, Apple computers, jeans, the Barbie doll, frisbees, skateboards, and fortune cookies. Yep, fortune cookies aren't native to China, although if you've seen Iron Man 3, you'd know that already. Number 94. California is the home state of McDonald's, purveyors of some of the most unhealthy yet supernaturally delicious food the money can buy. The world's first McDonald's restaurant opened in 1940 in San Bernardino, under the original name of McDonald's Barbecue, and sold its burgers for only 10 cents a pop. Number 95. California is also the location of the first Disneyland theme park, which was opened on the 17th of July 1955 in the Southern California city of Anaheim. Walt Disney himself arrived at the concept of Disneyland after visiting various amusement parks with his daughters in the 1930s and 40s. And as of 2018, it's been visited by a staggering 726 million people, the highest cumulative attendance of any theme park on the planet. Number 96. On the 20th of June 2015, 66 people managed to successfully ride the world's largest surfboard on the waves of Huntington Beach, California. This massive surfy boy measured 12.83 meters in length and 3.37 meters in width, which still seems kind of small considering it sported 66 human beings. Number 97. California is the only state in the US to have hosted both the Summer Olympics, which it did in 1932 and 1984, and the Winter Olympics. Suck it, Maine. Number 98. Bliss, the world-famous Windows wallpaper depicting a lush green hill against a blue sky flecked with fluffy white clouds, is actually a photograph taken in California's Napa Valley by photographer Charles O'Rear. Bonus fact, the image is actually completely unedited, which makes the view all the more impressive. Number 99. The only person born in California to have become president of the US was Richard Nixon, who was, incidentally, also the only president to resign, owing to the fact he paid hush money to people who were spying on his opponents. Not a great legacy, to be fair. Number 100. 
Depending on your tolerance for spooky happenings and creepy goings on, if you're heading to California, you might want to either avoid or deliberately visit the Santa Lucia Mountains, just to see if you can catch a glimpse at the fabled Dark Watchers. California folklore tells of tall, featureless dark figures spotted in the Santa Lucia Mountains who stand among the trees, silently observing travelers. The Dark Watchers are apparently most commonly spotted around the hours of twilight and dawn, and are partial to wearing wide-brimmed hats and canes. Yeah, just hipsters. Number 101. Clark Kerr, the legendary former president of the University of California, once opined that the three purposes of a university are to provide a uh, intimate time for students, sports for the alumni, and parking for the faculty. Let's just say that during my time at university, the parking was great. So that was 101 Facts About California. Yeah, did you learn anything? Are you from California? Can you tell me any more? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, do us a favor, please, and give this video a like. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to 101 Facts. I hear it's good for you. Good for your health. Like, just do it anyway, please. Also, click on that bell so YouTube tells you when we've made our videos. Nice. In the meantime, though, good lord. Two videos on screen now, the both of which are going to wet your whistle so much that it will drown. <laughs> I'll see you there. Bye. Worst outro I think I've ever done.